All right. Matthew chapter 15, verse 32 and 33, we read last time. So let's just read over it again. <clears throat> then Jesus called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And I will not send them away fasting, lest they faint in the way. And his disciples say unto him, When should we have so much bread in the wilderness as to fill so great a multitude? <clears throat> okay, so Jesus gives us his heart view. It's a heart view that he had when ch the children of Israel were in the wilderness for 40 years. Uh, and when they're in the wilderness with him during this season and it's his view of wilderness wanderers you know not we're not talking about even entering into the land yet it's his view of wilderness wanderers and that is that he doesn't want to send them away empty and he did give a manna remember bread from heaven it was called he gave them because he didn't want to send them away empty and he desires to give them something and that and we know it's bread but let me say it like this he desires to give them something that something will give them strength to not just strength to continue with him in hard places like the wilderness okay so you could see that that would be important you could see that would be extremely important um, that in both cases, in the wilderness wanderings and here in the wilderness, his heart hadn't changed because he knows, what, what did he say in John 8? If you continue in my word, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. Okay, so here it is. He's saying, I am going to feed you. I'm going to give you bread, which is me in you that will cause you to be able to continue with me. Well, man, I think we all can rejoice in that. Um, and of course, then what was his disciples' response? Well, you know, whence should we have so much bread in, in this wilderness to feed a great multitude? And so, I just wrote down, but in verse 33, his own know nothing of Jesus' bread reality. I put it in parenthesis, bread reality, <clears throat> because it's not as we suppose. Um, and then <clears throat> a reality in which he gives his flesh, not just on the cross, but to be taken within ourselves. <clears throat> so... I mean, how many Christians do you know that really understand Jesus' bread reality? How many people do you know that are really partaking of that, that are eating him as the bread of life when they get faint? And let's face it, let's just face it. In Christianity today, when somebody gets faint, when they start faltering or they start having a hard time, the last thing they even think about on their list is bread, is Jesus is the bread of life. They don't think of it. And a lot of times it's because they're wandering around in the wilderness of their own understanding. <clears throat> Instead of drawing from the the light of life and the, in his life on that front, so he becomes broken bread. He dies literally for this, so that, but it's not just, it's not just when we're weary or this or that. It is so that we can continue with him. And that's what the scripture said. <clears throat> so, eating this bread reality is not just searching the scriptures and getting something. It's not, it is not. It is not just searching the scriptures and getting something. And I think that if we believe that, then there is a big deception going on. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I'm sorry, but this stuff is not going away like it normally would by this, this point in time. <laughs> um, if 
if you really get close to me and look into my eyes, you'll see it's not all gone yet. <clears throat> um, just a, a, a few scriptures or a few things that Jesus said in relationship to bread. He said, uh, what was it, at the woman at the well. <clears throat> And the disciples came back and, you know, he was, he was weary. Do you remember that? He was weary and hungry and he sat down on the well and his disciples went to get food. Jesus was weary and hungry and they came back and he was all, woohoo. <laughs> and they said, what's happening, you know? And he said, I have, to, I have bread to eat that you know not of. Bread to eat. Okay? Not just a, a scripture that gave me pep. You know, sometimes we use scriptures like we use sugar. <clears throat> or coffee. No offense. <laughs> because that would include... Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, the main thing that, you know, that keeps our services going is that coffee maker back there. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> It's, and, that's, and that's what we use seeing something in the scripture. It lifts our flesh. But what Jesus is talking about is not something that lifts our flesh. It is something that, that gets us um, coming unto him, going after him, being with him in the process. And, and Jesus even, in fact, very early on said, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of my Father. It's what's coming out of him that, that enlivens us. It's, it's bread reality because it's not just quickening, it's not just anointing, it is the literal bread of life that we're taking into because we're, we're getting every word. You know, let's face it. How often do we get every word? Just read one scripture and tell me, look over how many words and tell me that you get something out of every word. That, and, and, that, and every word is something that is proceeding out of the mouth of the Father to you. <clears throat> That's another reason why I say slow down. Read one scripture or one word or whatever. <clears throat> and make your prayer simple. Lord, make this living word out of your mouth to me that I may continue with you. By Christ, amen. By the bread of life that is within you. By Christ, not just, you know, Anoint me, and then, and then the anointing goes away, or bless me, and then the blessing goes away, and da 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 da. But, and yet, it is meant to be daily bread because we, He wants a relationship with us in us daily. Now, I know He has a relationship with all Christians daily, He wants a relationship in us as bread daily. Okay? <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and get to John 6 now. Um, in John 6, verse 50, Jesus says this. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Okay? What does that mean? What does that mean? And What does anything mean, people? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Come on, let's just get real. What does anything mean? You know? Jesus, you know, Paul wrote it, but he said, we know not uh, anything yet as we ought. Okay. Well, I have periods of time where I think I know a whole lot. And the scripture is, tr let God be true and every man be a liar. The scripture is true. I know nothing yet as I ought. So that makes me want to pursue the Lord. Okay, and, and I've gotten a little older, so I need to be doing, I need to be utilizing, utilizing my time toward that end, toward his heart, toward, toward him breathing instead of me getting something and going, this ought to impress people. I have no desire to do that. You know, somebody said, you know, I heard that, you know, what, uh, 
good things had come out of the Ireland thing. If, if anything that I shared touched or affected anybody, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. And I, I can't take credit for anything. I just want to know the Lord, and maybe if by the grace of God, the Lord I'm knowing is breathed out and somebody is affected, then glory to God. But my first goal is I want to know him. I want to be with him. I want to pursue him. And what a horrible thing it would be for me to take in him breathing that into me and then me utilize it as if it was me and glory in that. I mean, that would be, that would be horrible. So, you know, and I know a lot of times we just get stuff that he gives us by the anointing or this and that and whatever, and maybe we do that with. But how much worse if in his presence, as if the very Lord himself is, remember, remember he took his disciples there at the end and he, whew, he breathed into them the breath of life. And then we take that and we go breathe it on somebody and let them promote us as a result of that. Ah, I cannot do it. I cannot do it. I cannot stand for that. I am an empty shelf, shell and a blind man, and I'm always blind. I never see. I only see through his eyes. I never see. He has eyes, and he sees. I never see. I'm blind. I've been reading the scriptures for the vast majority of my life and he still shows me things that I've looked at that scripture a million times. If I could just see then I could see. I can't. I can't. And I don't ever want to stop being a blind man. I just want him to be my eyes and my heart and my mind and my hands and my everything. Alright, so <clears throat> This is the bread that came down from heaven. What does that mean? Uh, that which came down from heaven, from God, of his son, was not meant just to come down and die on an altar. But the slain one was to be taken on the inside and become our life within. So broken bread, lamb within, that's the, that's the goal. <clears throat> um, and, and it's in John 6 where Jesus, even better than, than at the Last Supper, John 6, he explains the bread concept, his bread reality, better than any other place. Uh, for example, <clears throat> um, in John 6, uh, uh, 30 through 33, um, Jesus is addressing this area. He's, he does so from the advantage point of the wilderness again, just to make sure we understand that. So verse 30, they said therefore unto him, what sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert. See, there it is. But they're not going to that place and living out as from there and finding the Lord that was there that is here. And I know that's a weird concept, but I understand it. Just like the book of Hebrews never really addresses our life. He doesn't go, well, look at your life and this and that and da 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 da. He always points back to the old covenant and he points back to priesthood or offerings or their experience in the wilderness or their experience of entering in or this and that. And he says, you need to find the Lord there and it will work because. We're all in that same place, but we can't see it because we're fooled by the props. <clears throat> as it is written he gave bread from heaven to eat then Jesus said unto them verily verily I say unto you Moses gave you not that bread from heaven but my father my father giveth you the true bread from heaven so <clears throat> um, well actually then he said he adds to it for the bread of God is he that cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. So notice that he's coming down, but he's not coming down as Savior. He's coming down as bread that gives life to the world by eating. He doesn't give life to the world. This isn't talking about the Savior. 
He doesn't give life to the world by praying a prayer at an altar and asking Jesus into your heart. He gives life to the world by eating this broken bread. <clears throat> so um, I wrote in John 6, Jesus gives us the true meaning of bread. And he gives the true meaning of every representation of bread. He said, this bread I give you is my flesh. This is me. This is not just me up in heaven. This is me in myself giving the manifestations in the flesh. <clears throat> I wrote, in other words, the bread that he gave in type and in shadow, whether in Old Testament or New, always represented eating or partaking of Christ in such a way that he would be in you and live in you as daily bread. Give us this daily bread to, so he can live in me. <clears throat> Not I, but Christ. All of these scriptures that we quote, Christ in you, the hope of glory, uh, all of them are fulfilled by living by every word that proceeds out of his mouth, out of his being, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Quit approaching the Bible as just scripture or commandments or, you know, because that's just focusing on your life. And you can't get to his life by focusing on your life. You can't. You cannot do that. <clears throat> All right, so consider verse 57. He, he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. All right, so this is not just saying that if you get saved, if you get filled with the Holy Spirit, if you get the nine gifts of the Spirit, or you even come up with an extra one, <laughs> that nobody's heard of yet. It is not what you're supposed to live by. You're supposed to eat me and live by me, to, to take that in, and that becomes your source, your life, your, you know. We, it's almost like sometimes we, we think we're eating Jesus, and it's like uh, he doesn't come in and become life, he just goes right through us out into the toilet. I mean, it's just like that sometimes. <clears throat> um, well, that sounds like a nuclear attack, and North Korea is. <laughs> I asked her to do that at a certain juncture. Thank you. So, he that eateth me shall live by me. This is what Jesus always intended for his priests. And we're all supposed to be priests. This is his purpose behind the showbread. When he, had, when he set up the showbread, he didn't just want us to look at a picture like that and go, oh, look there, there's a little gold, little gold table and it's got some bread on it. And, you know, I guess he's trying to, to feed the priests or something like that. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to try to, yeah, I should be able to do it. I just want to close, and this will be my last session tonight. I want to talk about eternal life. I want to talk about the true reality and listen to Jesus. Listen to Jesus' explanations, okay? So, um, so I, I wrote, then the Lord takes it one step further by saying, he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath Eternal life. Eternal life, okay? So I'm not sure where I put it in my notes, but I know that eternal life is not just an extension of your life. It's an extension of his life in us. Okay? <clears throat> um, I wrote this. Thus he connected eternal life more with what is taken inside of us concerning his kind of life than with an, any extension of our life beyond the constraints of time. I'll read it one more time. Thus he connects eternal life more with what is taken inside of us concerning his kind of life than with any extension of our life beyond the constraints of time. So we're going, oh good, I'm gonna live beyond time. Well, 
you know, I guess every, you know, I told somebody once, I guess everybody's got eternal life because so is everybody going to live beyond time in hell too. But anyway, never mind. <clears throat> all right, so I'm going to just read several scriptures and this will be the, the close. And these scriptures all have to do with eternal life and, and his life. All right. First is, uh, all these are John 6, verse 51. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. I mean, he didn't say if you become a Christian. He didn't say, you know, that if you get stuff out of the scriptures. He shall live forever. And the bread that I will give him is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Okay. Uh, verse 54. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. Well, some people think the eternal life is when he raises you up in the last day. Then you begin the eternal life journey, right? Anybody ever heard of that? Does the people believe, anybody here ever believe that? I did. Um, but he clearly says, whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. And once you've eaten of him and partaken, partake, you have to partake. Then he'll raise you up at the last day. All right? And then the last scripture is verse 57. As the living Father hath sent me. As the living Father hath sent me. And I live by the Father. So he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. You see the process there? He's saying, I live by the Father, and even as, as that works, so you're supposed to live by me by taking me into you. That eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Okay. Because... He has, he, we have partaken, I don't know, let me try to just, we have partaken of what is eternal, but we're not trying to get what is eternal. We're trying to get a him. He, yes, he is eternal. Yes, it will affect us eternally, but we're trying to get an H-I-M. We want Jesus. We're trying to get him. So we are not trying to just hear his words and understand it. He speaks, Holy Spirit explain that. He, he, he speaks, someone writes it down, scriptures come about, we read it, Holy Spirit explain that. No, explain him, explain, explain, you know, if you knew me, you'd know my doctrine, Jesus said. If you know me, You'll understand what I say. If you don't know me, you're going you're gonna to twist it and apply it every way according to your mind because there is absolutely no way for you to know what I'm saying. So know him. Know him. And so that, but, but when we see, we all know that, so we say that, and that can, you know. So we're saying, <clears throat> Lord, I want to literally bring you into me. I want to eat your flesh and drink your blood. I want what is you and the substance of you found in broken bread, not just bread, but the substance of you, your broken body that you gave and your blood poured out, the substance and essence of, of what you and who you are Aside from my titles of God and of Jesus and reveal yourself in me. And, and I pursue you. I don't just pursue teaching or, or stature of knowledge. or I pursue you. I give my being to your being. I... I, I um, uh, like a, a Elisha, when, when 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. When, when Elijah crossed the Jordan and, and he rent his garment and it made it useless and he took up Elijah's garment, his, his mantle, and put it around him and he changed his identity and he changed who he was. He changed the way he would walk. He walked away from there and it says he left that place in the spirit and I forget the other word of Elijah. Lord, let it be something like that instead of just me reading a book and asking you what it means. Let me know you in that way. That I might be changed. I don't, I'm not seeking change. I'm seeking you. But if I find you, I will be changed. But I'm not seeking change because that's focused back on us. I seek you and you will be the answer to every question and every change and every area. And besides, my love isn't to change me because I love me and I want to be received and known as spiritual. I love you and I want to be known by you that someone says like Peter, I, they took note of him that he'd been with Jesus. I want him to smell the fragrance of you, Jesus, on me. I want him to experience the very life and spirit of, uh, through that mantle of you on me, not I, but Christ crucified, not I. So Father, grant us this and beyond this. My words are even foolishness in the light of, of you. But your spirit cares and your spirit wants us to be drawn in to him and draw him into us and, and not be satisfied to draw you into our, just our brain, but to have your mind. Not just coming into our head, into our brain, and us figuring out scriptures, and even if we get it from the Holy Spirit, but never, never more of you and less of us. Always more of us as we gain more of you. Break our hearts because we don't have you like we want you. Not, not, not break our hearts because we don't have you as we need you find the depths of that core that is within us that really wants you as we want you, as we truly want you. And meet us there. Become bread of life in us. In Jesus' name. Amen.